Welcome back. Hey, everybody. Okay, so last week we started in on you get what you pray for. And I think that um, we wanted to continue along the same lines with what we were talking about last week because prayer is is crucial. Mm-hmm. In, in the everyday life of a follower of Jesus, prayer is is one of those things that you cannot live without. Jesus tells us in the New Testament, when you fast and when you pray, not if. There, there was mm-hmm. never an if. It was never a question. It was when. And so I think that before, uh, in, the, in, the last, in the last episode, I had a lot more scriptures that went along with prayer that we didn't end up sharing. And, and I think that last week went really well. But here's, here's one from Mark 11, 24. Jesus says, I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. But, right? Here the you go. But. 25. But when you were praying, first forgive anyone that you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. Whoa. So, Jordan. <laughs> what? Um, basically, I, I shouldn't pray if I'm holding a grudge against people, huh? Yeah, unless you're asking the Lord to help you because you have a grudge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, but, but seriously, you know, um, and I think, you know, the passive aggressive comment that a lot of Christians make is like, well, all you can do is just pray for them when probably they're not going to pray for you. They're just saying that Mm -hmm. because, um, it's super religious and super cool to say, but I, in Mark, I think it's crucial that we understand that our prayers you can ask or pray for anything, and if you believe and you've received it, it will be yours. But if you're holding a grudge against anybody as you pray, you're not going to receive jack. Mm-hmm. Dang. And last week we we talked about, you know, you said, Jordan, that you don't think that there's anything such as an unanswered prayer. And we talked about, you know, the different seasons and the different timings of everything. Mm -hmm. But I would also, I might interject there from Mark 11 that maybe, I'm not saying that it's an unanswered prayer, but maybe your prayer hasn't come to fruition because you you have a grudge in your heart against somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very true. You're harboring something against a brother or sister in Christ or anybody else. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't even specify. It says, <laughs> if you first forgive anyone, it doesn't even specify only Christians or sinners. Or well, any yeah, just... because even whenever the Romans were nailing Jesus to the cross and whipping mm-hmm. him, he said, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. They weren't saved. You know, I said, you know, again, Gosh. <laughs> I'm trying that's, to catch myself. That's a, but that's a that's a fair point because then think about think about Paul, okay? Before Paul, Saul. Yeah. He was a witness to the stoning of Stephen. Mhm. Oh, yes. That wow, that was powerful. Now, was. okay, so if you guys don't know this story, I imagine a lot of you do. But if you don't know this story, th- this is this is pre-Paul. This is pre-awesome Paul and this is stupid Saul. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm stupid, he's so. really stupid, but okay. So Saul of Tarsus, he was, he was a Pharisee and, and he was charged with hunting down Christians, mm-hmm. um, and, and putting them in prison and, or killing them, stoning them, which was hardcore in Bible times. They'd literally throw rocks uh, at you isn't that, until oh you're gosh. dead. But here's what's crazy. <laughs> Remember the one story about, it's what? not funny. It's not, stop laughing. Now, I don't know what it's, it is. It's not funny. But remember when Paul got stoned and they thought he was dead? <laughs> so so they dragged him to the edge of yeah. town and then yeah. he just he woke just up. up. He woke up. Okay, and just, guys, that's it not just, funny. W- <laughs> but it's like, yeah. we'll just leave him there. He's dead. He woke yeah. up later. He's like. <laughs> yeah. He just woke up like, ow. You know, Lord. It, it, makes, it makes me think of like the Roadrunner commercials when the coyote gets crushed by like a boulder or something. And then he gets up and he's all bandaged. Oh, no, Paul it's had not those funny. moments. Like where he got bit by the viper and all those village people are like, oh, dang, dude's yeah. going to die. And then the next day they're like, I guess the dude's not going to die. Yeah. It's like, and then the snake died. He took it and threw it in yeah. the fire. And people are like, oh, it's only a matter of time. 
And then they wake up. <laughs> and they're like, Paul's probably making coffee over the fire or whatever. How did this happen? He's still alive. Yeah. No, but <laughs> anyway, back to the story. Very serious because so this is we're talking about the Bible. So straighten up, everybody. Stop it's not laughing. Fun. It's not fun. People. No. So so Saul is sitting there, and he is a witness to the stoning of Stephen. And the Bible tells us that Stephen, before everyone's gathering rocks and they're getting ready to, you remember dodgeball when you were a kid? No, listen for a second. Hey, this is piece of authenticity. I can be authentic. I know the rules to dodgeball. Okay. No, you can't hit their head. I didn't say the rules. I'm saying like, do you remember dodgeball? Of course I do. Like when you got hit the very next round, you came with a vengeance, and I remember, <laughs> yeah, I remember grabbing the dodgeball and just like, man, I just want to wreck someone in the face You're gonna with die. this ball. <laughs> yeah, and okay, so so there was that, and we keep we What's keep that? making a lot of jokes about some very terrible things, but we're that just joyful. Be, but we're yeah, we're full of joy. But anyway, so you wanted to just wreck someone with a ball that would not <laughs> hurt them. Now, this is what would happen when these angry people, Jordan's still laughing. It, well, you just these, said it would not hurt them, but you intended to hurt him, I'm sure, whoever hit you at dodgeball. Anyways, yes, your but point. But it wouldn't hurt like a stone. No, you but know? you know when you get hit with the dodgeball, yeah. you forget how your face feels. Okay, <laughs> all right. So so you, you have these guys, and they're all holding rocks, and I imagine that these, these awesome individuals, because I'm saying that with such sarcasm, they probably grabbed the biggest, sharpest rocks that they could find. Good Lord. That's horrible. Well, I mean, think about it. No, I know. And so Paul is, is, is a witness to this. And he it tells us that in that part, Stephen is literally probably on his knees right there on the ground, hands and knees, whatever. I, I don't know what position that he was in. But as they picked up rocks before they went to throw it, he, he said the same thing. He said, Lord, yeah. forgive them. I forgive them. Or don't hold this against them. Yes. they Yeah, they don't know what they're doing. Like, they don't know what they're doing. And to think, about, to think about that in the midst of Stephen's journey of serving the Lord and literally the, looking at these people in the face that are, that are about to stone him and yet his last act as a Christian, as a mm-hmm. follower of Jesus, is to pray for them. It, it makes me think about what the Bible says that, you know, pray for those that persecute you. Pray not just for your friends, but pray for your enemies. And, you know, a, a, I just said it above a lot, but it made me think about Paul. And he talks about in one of the um, letters that he wrote, the thorn in his side. And in the movie, uh, the Apostle Paul, no, Paul the Apostle of, of, Christ, of yeah. Christ, they thought that his thorn in his flesh was all of the Christians he had persecuted and, or killed, you know. And Stephen was one of those main ones. It kept flashing back um, to Stephen. And it makes you one of those people that have hurt you that maybe you weren't saved. You could, your forgiveness for them could be a part of their healing. Cause, cause for Paul, that was a thorn in his side, mm. you know, how they thought. And I'm sure he thought about that a lot, even if it yeah. wasn't the thorn that he talked about. And <clears throat> I know that that was something that he probably had to rebuke the enemy for feeling the shame and feeling guilt for that. You know, yeah. even when that was the former flesh before he was, you know, reborn in Christ, but just be we have got to be so ready to forgive and to pray because it says in the Bible, pray for your enemies. Hmm. That's exactly what Jesus did. That's exactly what Stephen did. Hmm. And he would have, maybe the Lord showed him. You never know in his last moments. Like you see that man over there that's holding all the other Pharisees coats and watching you die. Um, he's going to be one of my main apostles. Hmm. So it, I just got chill bumps. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because I didn't even think about that. But it's just, man, we got to grace those people because every single person that, think about that person you were just so bitter at and you never want to look at their face again. Think about the calling the Lord has on their life, what he has intended for them. What if your prayer could could turn that? What if your prayer could start that 
um, road to uh, Damascus mm. moment for them. Yeah. yeah. Their Saul to Paul <clears throat> for them. Yeah. I Man, that's a, that's a crazy picture to sit there and think. But, you know, shame shame is is such a is such a nasty thing and and I, I wouldn't be surprised if the thorn in his flesh that Paul was talking about was actually memories yeah. of, of all the people that he helped take down and right in that movie they even show it being like little kids a little girl running yeah. and it just gives me trouble I'm thinking about it mm-hmm. the persecution that the all Christians even around the world now and then yeah. have dealt with it's like we've got to be well, but I I heard a pastor say one time it was it was awesome. It was such an incredible message that you know a lot of times when we come back to Christ, a lot of people are talking about you know remove remove these memories and and all this stuff like the, of their former selves mm. before Christ and everything. But I tend to think that remembering who I was even before Christ keeps a level of humility there. That lets me know that prior to Christ, I I had nothing. I I am nothing without Christ, and so that's what Paul, whenever he said that the Lord gave him, you know, and he says the thorn in his flesh, and he says, "Please take this away from me." It, it was to keep him humble, and the Lord said, "No, my grace is sufficient." <sighs> you know, I, I think that a lot of people do that too is is they're always like man you know and they get they carry shame for who they were but at the same time i don't go around bragging about who i was pre-christ but i don't forget that because it always helps me remember that before christ i had absolutely nothing and that's what we have to remember when we're praying for other people, especially praying for those that are persecuting us, those that are, you know, there's always those people in your life that you feel like, man, the Lord put them in my life for a reason. They they frustrate me every day. Maybe it's people that you work with or somebody in your family. We all have family members that kind of rub us the wrong way. It is what it is, but it's understanding that that you pray for those people, Romans says, Paul tells us in Romans chapter 12, bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Wow. Can we, can we say those of us that, that have people in our lives that do get on our nerves and they grind our gears, can you say that you don't curse that person? And if you're wondering like, no, of course I don't curse them. Have you talked bad about them? Mm. Guilty as charged. Yeah. Yeah. Like our words, their blessings or their curses. Or their curses. There's yeah. no, oh, I didn't mean anything by it. But you spoke it. And mm-hmm. man, it's just so yeah, convicting. It's so convicting. And I thought it was really interesting, Aubrey, when we were reading through the letters of Paul to all the different churches. At the beginning, he always told them what he was praying for them for. And it was all different things. Did you notice that? And I thought that was amazing because I think sometimes whenever we pray for people, we always pray the same old thing, but the Holy Spirit will show us exactly what to pray over them. And sometimes you might be like, I don't know why I'm praying, you know, for their quiet time or it, it, it's just the Holy Spirit. I mm. mean, he knows exactly what those people need. So if yeah. we're sitting down in his presence and we're praying over somebody or even interceding for somebody. Also, can I say this? Do you know that Jesus is always interceding for us to the Father? Like, mm-hmm. he's speaking in our behalf. So even when we fall short, the Bible says, what what book is that? The Bible says that, that he is constantly there interceding for us on our behalf to the Father so that even when we sin, he's still vouching for us, saying, you know, telling the Lord, you know, mm-hmm. they're ours. <sighs> that doesn't. Mm. humble you to where you can just forgive that person that you've had issues with. And I don't know. Yeah. So here's, here's the thing a lot. I know that there are people that are watching this podcast that you have somebody in your life that is either in your family or they're, they, you work with them every day or you're just friends with them. And maybe you've been interceding for them for a long time, or you, you know, you, Wishful thinking is what I like to call it, where you're not really praying for somebody, but you're just like, man, I hope that the Lord gets them one of these days, you know? (laughs) 
<laughs> you can also not, pray a curse over someone. Yeah, Get him, God. Yeah, not not Get like him. that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for real. I don't don't ever pray that because because <laughs> the Lord's like, oh, you mean get you? No. I'm yeah. Just if, if y'all want to if y'all want to be wrecked about the power of words, you think about the movie Harriet. That's about Harriet Tubman, and and you know she was she was a slave, and when her master didn't set their family free like he promised to do, it shows you in the movie. She runs out into the woods gets on her hands and knees and she begs the Lord to take him. And Aubrey, I was reading, that's actually true. That legit happened. Yeah. I mean, and, and the dude, she said, funny. strike him down, Lord. Yeah. She said, strike him down. And he did he not died. live much longer after that. So you, you have to understand the, the power of our words and you might just be rolling your eyes and thinking it's not that serious. Listen, we have to come to the realization that the Bible is either 100% true or yes. it's 100% false. It's either God breathed or it's not. And there are multiple times in scripture where the Bible tells us that the power of our words are life and death, yep. blessing and curses. You're either uplifting somebody or you're chopping them down. There, There is no middle ground. You can't sit there and say, oh, well, you know, some days I really like that person. So I talk good about him. And then other days I talk bad about him. That it, it, God does not move in our gray areas. With with God, it's it's black and white. A lot of things are black and white, and I know that we've said that before on this podcast. I stand on that daily. It, either the word is God breathed, or it's not. So that lets me know that I'm not supposed to curse anybody, whether they're my enemies, whether they're saved or not saved. It it's not up to me to decide that. I'm supposed to bless those that persecute me. What does Jesus say? If somebody comes and strikes you across your face, you turn the other cheek and you offer them the other one. If they ask you for their for a coat, you give them your shirt too. Mm-hmm. It's it's a life of <clears throat> generosity that says I well there is no if ands or buts. It's either one way or it's not. And I think some people think I don't know how to do that. I mean, I want to. Yeah. But it's so hard. I don't know how to love somebody that much. I don't know how to not be selfish sometimes. You know, our flesh is always up in there bugging us, tempting us, all that. It's not always the devil. Sometimes it's just us. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage you and say, if you look at Jesus, if you sit in the presence of the Holy Spirit and let him work on your heart, if you read the word of God, it says the word of God is like a mirror, we look at the word and we see our downfalls, which doesn't bring shame. It brings repentance, which brings a change of heart, which brings transformation, which dream, which brings us moving from glory to glory to glory with the Lord mm. and becoming better and better and better every single day. So yeah. I'll tell you right now, it might be hard for you to give the shirt off of your back to somebody or that homeless person that you don't know if they're really homeless, you're questioning because they're standing by the stoplight and they have a dog. Why do they have a dog if they have no money? You know, and you think all these things in your head, right? The Lord doesn't say question someone's intentions. He says, I know the intentions of a man's heart, but he says, give. So if you hear the unctioning of the Holy Spirit to give, then give, mm. right? And it says... Uh, man, where was it in the Bible? I just read it. It was talking about, maybe it was in Jude because we've read Jude today. It was talking about, you will know my followers because they obey me. It's that simple. And also you'll know my followers by their love. So I put that together as in, we love Jesus so much so that we obey everything he asks. And Jesus loves everybody so much so that he will ask us to pour love out on others and we will do it because we love Jesus mm-hmm. so much. Well, and wh- where was it in the scripture that we read that the like the homeless people walking along the street could be angels in disguise? That's crazy to think. It, it's it's crazy to think that that generosity and and I'm not I'm not talking about you know, doing stuff like that so that you can take credit for it. I'm talking about just doing it because you are a reflection of God. Well, even Jesus said, don't be like the Pharisees. Yet again, Jesus always says that. (laughs) And there's a lot of Pharisees in the world nowadays. They're not only from back then. Jesus says, don't be like the Pharisees that give out in front of everybody. Oh, Lord, I've given you this much. Well, they just earned their reward. So good job, buddy. You don't have any treasures in heaven for that. I hope your high five from your neighbor was good enough. Yeah. And so give people things without expecting. Give people things because you're obeying what the Lord's asked you to do. If the Lord hasn't asked you to give something to somebody, but you feel an obligation, don't do it. 
do what the Lord's asked you to do um, because you can fall into fear of man because you feel an obligation to give because somebody has asked you. But if the Lord has, asked, has not asked you to, then don't. It could be that simple. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes we make it a little more complicated. Well, I think here, here's, here's what James chapter 4 says, right? We, if you have questions about anything, you always go to the Word. And so James chapter 4 tells us that uh, you want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. Wow. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and you wage war and take away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You only want wait, you want only what you give what will give you pleasure. I think oh, do you have anything? No, go ahead. Made me think of a few years ago, Aubrey, when we went, we took the whole worship team to the Bethel conference. And it was down in Texas. So we drove five hours from Enid, Oklahoma to Dallas, Texas to go to this Bethel conference. And the first set of tickets were bought a few months later, and then I bought the last half um, a little while before the conference. So we were all ready. We had all the tickets for everybody, you know, via, like, cell phone tickets, all this stuff. Well, I go up to the ticket counter. We're all ready. We're standing in line, ready to go into the conference, and they say, sorry, the first set of tickets that were bought were canceled, so we've given those to other people. So what was it, 13 people? Um, only five could go in. The other tickets were resold because it was just a miscommunication or something. And I remember just crying. <laughs> and we started, we prayed. Um, Aubrey, you stayed with the people that were outside, right? That mm -hmm. didn't have tickets. And you, you guys were praying and worshiping. And they had a TV screen out there. So you could technically watch on this little TV screen under this tent, like the, con the conference. And I was in there with the four others that... Um, went in and we were kind of emotional and just like praying and the worship was happening and God was going to do something. But the part of me that was trying to make something happen, I was trying to figure out, oh, well, why don't I take my bracelet off and you take yours and you take yours and we'll just pay them through offering later the tickets. So it's like we technically did pay for the tickets and we will hand it to people and we'll, ro you know, we're going to rotate. We're going to. And I was trying to figure out a way to go around because I didn't truly trust that God was going to do it. And he convicted me so much because I got a text from Aubrey and he said, hey, slowly but surely we've all gotten tickets. People have just been giving us tickets. So we're coming in. And I got so emotional, Aubrey, because I had to apologize to the Lord. I'm so sorry, Lord. Like, you said you were going to do this, and I still didn't trust it. And it wasn't the way I thought it was going to happen. I thought maybe I had something to do with mm. it, being crafty. And, oh, man. So don't beat yourself up about things you try to make happen. Just, just repent and draw closer to the Lord through it. Yeah, say because all all your requests are heard in heaven when you come before Him with prayer with with your right motives, your right heart. See, because the Bible says that God sees to to the heart of a man. So if your motives aren't pure from the beginning, maybe that might be a reason why the prayers and the petitions that you're sending to Him have not come to fruition yet. Is because your motives were wrong from the start. And I think a heart check is required every day. Like not just not just once, but but yep. every day. Um, First John chapter five, and I think we'll we'll cut it after this. But I think it's important, especially when you're talking about prayer and you're talking about praying for others. First John chapter five, starting in verse thirteen, John says, "I have written this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know, so so you may know you have eternal life." And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And since we know he hears us, when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. If you see a fellow believer sinning in a way that does not lead to death, you should pray. And God will give that person life. But there is a sin that leads to death. And I'm not saying that you should pray 
for those, and I'm not saying you should pray for those who commit it. All wicked actions are sin, but not every sin leads to death. We know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning, for God's Son holds them securely, and the evil one cannot touch them. Hmm. So <clears throat> when we pray, you know, you get what you pray for. Episode one, we were, we were talking about prayer and, and getting and putting your petitions up there. When when you have pure motives and you're and you're praying for somebody else, maybe somebody in your life is caught up in sin. And you've been praying like, Lord, please just intervene. God's timing is not yours. Keep praying. Keep interceding for them. And just like John says, since we know, it's by faith that we know he hears us. So when you pray, if you were getting immediate answers, it's like Jordan was talking about earlier with with McDonald's and, Mm -hmm. you know, getting that fast food. Like, you know, when you order something, or you go to a restaurant, you know when you order off the menu, you're going to get what you ordered most of the time. You sometimes I'll send it back. But but <laughs> so back. <laughs> but we we know. John says that when you pray and he says it like he assumes we are all on the same page. We are all believers of Christ Jesus, Yeshua, and he says and since we know we know that he hears us. How can we know that? It's by faith alone. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. So don't grow weary in doing good. And sometimes we pray for people that we know that God has already moved in their life previously. And we just keep praying because the Bible says that he who began a good work in you will surely bring it to completion. You know, the strongest way to pray. I know you do. The strongest way to pray is to pray the word of God. Yeah. What Aubrey just said. There are people that I know you're thinking of that you've prayed for for years and years and you haven't noticed a difference and you're like, I hate the saying, all we can do is pray. That's what you should be doing. That should be your first line of defense, um, offense really, is to pray. And I, I need to tell you something because I had to learn this too. There's nothing that you can do in your power to change somebody. And that should feel great. <laughs> that should feel like the pressure's off because if you fully trust the Lord, then you can trust that he loves this person that's in your mind so much more than you do. And that what he wants for them is even better than what you want for them. And so speak the word of God over them to the father. That's the best thing you can do and live a life that makes it an example like Paul said follow me as I follow Christ be that person that people actually it's safe to follow you because you're literally just following Christ that's what you're doing and I think eventually we become transparent so much so like Jesus that they see Jesus through us that's how we're supposed to be if there's flesh in the way you can't see through flesh so that's why we have to die to our flesh that die to our flesh every single day so that people can see Jesus through us yeah he hears you when you have faith and you can receive it and you know that all your prayers and petitions are heard by the creator of the heavens and the earth. All you have to do is check your motives, check and make sure that you're not harboring any unforgiveness, any grudges toward anybody else. And then the Bible is very clear by faith. He hears you. And mm-hmm. if you ask anything, you will receive it. Even if, if it's for you, if it's for anybody else, just keep at it, building that perseverance, building that faith. And we will see, it's like the Bible says, we'll see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Yep. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But we hope that you guys have enjoyed the two prayer podcasts. I know I know that we enjoyed we learning. Loved it. I had a little yeah. too much fun in the beginning, but I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I composed myself. Yeah. Yeah, forgive us for laughing about people being stoned. It's not it's, funny. I mean, I said stoned. It makes you think about, never mind. All right. Anyway, Drugs. Yeah. But thank you for joining <laughs> us again for part two. We will see you next week and see what the Lord has in store. Thank you for joining Peace of Authenticity. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, Bob. Bye, Bob. Look at Bye, Bob. <laughs>